Well, hello there and welcome to Mind Your Business. I'm Jennifer Anderson, host of the show. I'm also the executive director of the Georgina Chamber of Commerce. This is a show that we put together along with Rogers TV Georgina, and it's for and about business in our community. On today's show, we're talking about the trades in that sector. Uh, we would be remiss if we didn't have a show that focused on GTTI because of this organization, what has it has done in the past, what it is doing, especially now more than ever for the trades in Georgina and the impact it will have on the trades in Georgina and beyond. On this show today, I have three guests who are a part of GTTI. I'd like to introduce them for you now. First, we have John DePabry. He is the chair of the GTTI board. Hi, John. Thank you very much for having us on, Jennifer. It's always a privilege to be able to come and share some of the great news with you and the community at large about what we're doing at GTTI. So again, thank you for inviting us. Especially now more than ever, because there's so many exciting things that are happening with the organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very good. We also have Valerie Ellis. She is the executive director of GTTI. Hi, Valerie. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here. Thank you. And finally, a new face to GTTI. We have Phil Adams. He is the director of the Skilled Trade Institute of GTTI. Hi, Phil. Hi, Jennifer, and thank you very much for having me. It's, uh, it's a very new and exciting uh, venture that we're about to embark on. I absolutely agree. And as we look at, you know, local media uh, and, it, you know, it's not just local media that is talking about this. When you see the press releases, when you see the quotes in our local media and you see ministers, when you see um, everybody who is talking about it uh, beyond Georgina, I'm thrilled that uh, this is something that really is taking place in our community. So I think we would be remiss if we didn't uh, you know, we want to talk about what's happening now. We want to talk about what's happening in the future of GGTI, but I think uh, we definitely have to know where the start came from. So I'm going to throw it over to John because John, you have a wealth of information when it comes to the history of GTTI. I know it could be a show on its own, uh, but tell us a little bit about uh, what GTTI stands for. Sure. Uh, thanks very much again, Jennifer. Uh, I need to take us back about 14 years. It was in the spring of 2006 that Georgina Trades Training Inc. was incorporated. Uh, it, it, uh, its roots go back to Jerry Brower, uh, who uh, unfortunately has passed away since, who came across some information uh, which basically divulged or showed that high school students in particularly Sutton, and Keswick had a disproportionate rate of dropout instances, had a disproportionate rate of students not pursuing post-secondary opportunities. Uh, that was not acceptable. Uh, anyone would say that. So a group of people got together and said, we cannot accept the status quo for what it means for our youth in this community. We need to do something. A group of people came together. It was Jerry, really, ultimately, who brought the group together, but managed to engage some very strategic community partners. The two school boards, South Lake Community Futures, Town of Georgina, and the Chamber of Commerce as well. That group came together and said, what is it that we can do to try to improve the situation for our high school students, whether they've completed high school or not, we need to do something that is going to get them uh, engaged and involved in the economy of what goes on in the world. They came together and decided that trades, even back then, was something that was struggling. This is going back, again, 14 years. So they put together this model of what became GTTI. And we should make it clear from the beginning that the founders of the organization knew full well that we were not going to survive in a world that was lulled with competition. So they decided that they did not want to become a private career college. They did not want to come become what's called a training delivery agency. They did not want to be affiliated with a community college or a branch of that. They wanted to do something 
that would give freedom and flexibility to deliver programs that would be current in nature and relevant at that moment in time. So the organization was born. We were very fortunate at the time. Town of Georgina leased back uh, the property that we still occupy on 5207 Baseline Road. South Lake Community Futures and Trillium Foundation gave us some grants to retrofit that. Uh, we took out a guaranteed loan with the South Lake, guaranteed by the town, allowed us to retrofit the building to the point where it is now. And we have had improvements over time. For example, the, the Chippewa of uh, Georgina Island First Nations also were a part of establishing our welding suite that is now in that facility. Uh, we have partnered over the 14 years with community colleges from all around the neighboring area, not one in specific. What we've always done is we've looked for what is the strength of programs that are offered at the various community colleges to give our students the best that we can. So when we look at, for example, the pre-apprenticeship arborist program that we've run in the past, uh, with all due respect, Fleming seems to have been the one that people would go to. We've looked to automotive uh, technology, uh, we've partnered with places like Centennial. We look at George Brown. We've looked at a whole lot of different organizations. So over our 14 year period, we've seen over 10,000 students go through our doors and receive some type of training. Wow. That, that training again, those, those programs were in conjunction with community colleges. However, we've developed our own programs that we are funded through, for example, Regional Municipality of York. Our set program, uh, has been there for the last uh, 11 years. And we have diversified that program again to meet whatever the needs are in the community at the time. So we have developed everything from uh, office training, admin, uh, introductory office admin training to a uh, golf greenskeeper program that was actually done in partnership with uh, the Briars using some of their staff and facilities. Uh, so that's what we've done. Our, our training programs continue. They are anything from a four-hour certification or recertification program right up to our 40-week pre-apprenticeship programs, either that we do on our own or that we do in, in conjunction with the community college. Uh, we are extremely happy uh, with what we've done. Our results speak for themselves. And as a result of that, about uh, three and a half years ago, uh, we decided that we needed to broadcast to a greater audience and have more students come into our program. So we went through this long, complicated, three and a half year long process. Uh, that could be a show all unto itself. Uh, we developed a, a proposal that was accepted by the Ministry of Labor, Training and Skills Development, front funded through the Skills Advance Ontario program. Uh, at that time, Phil was not yet on board, but Valerie was very much involved uh, in the beginning stages of that, working on that proposal, making that submission, uh, and ultimately on the 31st of March of uh, 2020, <laughs> we were told that we were going to get what we wanted. Careful what you wish for. <laughs> and, so, and so now here we are uh, having to, uh, you know, get a lot of work done in a short period of time in order to be able to meet what we've told people that we are going to do. And, we're extremely, extremely excited uh, about that. Well, I love what you said because I think the word over the last four months has been pivot for businesses and organizations who are looking at pivoting their business. It sounds like uh, everything that you've done over the last 14 years really speaks to that um, type of environment where you were constantly assessing and evaluating what the needs are of the community what the needs are of the sector and it really did uh, speak to uh, entering programs leaving programs that were of interest and of value to well, any um, yeah. school or any person at that given time yeah and what we've done over time uh jennifer one of the things that i believe has always been a real strength of ours is we've had you know our ear to the ground we we've listened to what do our clients call up or walk through the door and say, are you offering a program on A, B, or C? Uh, employers are come to us and say, are you doing any training in A, B, or C? Right. What, what we knew and what we've known since the dawn of our organization is there's always been a disconnect between the employer and the employee. 
And our strengths, um, among our strengths, is the fact that we've been able to listen to that and to actually say, it's time that we do something about it. If there's a gap between uh, supply and demand, what can we do in a very constructive way to tar start to turn that around? And as a matter of fact, the, the Skills Advance Ontario project that we were funded under actually speaks to that very issue. So we were thrilled when we find out that, hey, here's a vehicle that we've been talking about for years because, for example, the apprenticeship program is not exactly the, the easiest pathway to navigate, either for an employer or an employee. We also know that in York Region, the overwhelming amount of employers are what we would call small businesses. If you're a two or three person operation and you're looking to sign on an apprentice, that's a struggle because you don't have a human resources department, you're it. And so trying to navigate that system can be very cumbersome. And we thought, well, we, we've been kind of doing this through our pre-apprenticeship programs. We have our bank of employers that we go to and say, will you take on these people? Uh, and the other thing we heard is sometimes employers don't necessarily want to have someone who is a fully trained apprentice. They want to be able to get someone who has a fundamental introductory set of skills. And if they choose to continue down that path, we've brokered that first relationship. We have an employer and a potential employee that we've now linked together. They can decide what it is that they want to do for their, for their needs in that workplace. That, make, and that makes absolute sense. I want to bring uh, Valerie into the conversation now. Valerie, you are the executive director. Uh, it certainly has been a different four months for um, all businesses and organizations, but you uh, surely have had to adapt some of your programs. We did. We had to pivot very quickly. Pivot's a great word, Jennifer. Um, just as the... Well, <laughs> yeah, great word. Um, just as the pandemic hit, we really had to think very quickly on our feet. Um, you know, a lot of educational institutions were, were sort of, you know, faced with the same dilemma. But in our case, it's very difficult to teach somebody how to swing a hammer online. Um, but we were very, um, you know, we, were, we thought outside the box. We tried to be very innovative. And we came up with some alternative uh, training and programming, one of which is going on right now, is our online office administration program, which was hugely popular, so much so that uh, we'll probably end up running another session. And that's where we brought people together um, and we were able to bring them through this program online with some QuickBooks skills, some office admin stuff, MS Office, soft skills training. So that has proven to be really, really popular. And we started our whole carpentry pre-apprenticeship program as well. And we were able to offer the first bit of that training online as well. So we were helping students get through their certification process. Now, thankfully, we're slowly able to bring students back into um, the space, into the center, you know, with social distancing and those kinds of things in place to learn some of the hands-on pieces. So we've had some time to, to kind of change the way that we deliver programming. And, you know, this, this is something that we'll likely maintain um, because this, you know, through innovation comes um, new ideas on, you know, maybe better practices. So for us, we'll likely continue on offering um, you know, the hands-on experience that you can get here in the center, but we'll probably likely continue to do the online piece as well. Right. So here's, I'm going to, you know, broadcast my complaint of GTTI right in the middle of the show. Uh, as a, a resident of the link and, and having our office there, I find it really annoying that your industrial kitchen is across the hall. And when you have your culinary arts programs, I have to smell it. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> Right, so, you for being a, a, a tenant at the link. I just, you know, no, I, I just wish, you know, we could adapt into some kind of testing or, you know, if you need any <laughs> help with uh, judging or, you know, any of those things during the Well, program. keep those ideas coming. You never know. It could happen. Yeah, but that's one of those programs that, uh, you know, as you said, um, can't be adapted so much. So to be able to have that flexibility moving forward, and it sounds, you know, as John said, you've had that flexibility for 14 years and really adapting and, and figuring out what works and what doesn't for each of the students and clients that come through GTTI. 
Absolutely. Yeah. And I mean, I think that's, I mean, that's what we're founded on. You know, it's really, uh, to, to John's point, listening to what the community need is and what employers needs are and really filling those gaps. We don't want to, we don't want to redo something that another agency or another service provider is already doing. We want to be able to fill the gaps in training and be able to be very inclusive so that people who may have been marginalized and not able to participate in training due to uh, transportation issues or, um, you know, just, just in, you know, inability to access programs, we want them here. So we're very responsive. We, we pride ourselves on that, and uh, we'll continue to do that going forward. So we've seen uh, we've seen on air, we've seen in the papers uh, information about the Skilled Trades Institute, the big announcements that have been happening over the last few weeks and months, and uh, right in the middle of it. Uh, we have Phil, who uh, joins uh, GTTI. You are the director of the Skilled Trades Institute. Um, tell me a little bit about your journey. This has you know, only been a few weeks for you, but you really jumped in the deep end. You jumped in running, right? <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah, yes, I have. Uh, I, I began with uh, GTTI in the uh, Skilled Trades Institute uh, June the 22nd, so I am uh, fairly new to this. I'm not new to the, the trades or the training. Um, I have an extensive background in uh, education and skilled trades. Um, so the journey so far has been has been very, very exciting. We have been so busy recruiting, uh, filling all these positions, we are currently seeking um, uh, trades instructors. We're uh, we're holding interviews and uh, and recruiting as we as we speak. Uh, it's been a very very exciting three weeks so far, and uh, there's just so much activity and interest. It's just been uh, it's just been incredible. Uh, the amount of support from both the municipalities. Uh, uh, the ministries and the public uh, in general has just been an incredible journey so far. Well, and that's one of the things I noticed. I was very excited to see the job postings for the positions at Skilled Trades because, you know, if you read the information, you know um, that uh, you're going to have uh, up to 100 people who are um, entering into Skilled Trades and in, into positions. But long before that happens, you have 19 positions that are coming into effect just from the Skilled Trades Institute. So you're, you're bringing in jobs into the community long before um, you potentially are opening the doors, which is amazing to see. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. These, uh, these positions, uh, they're all uh, uh, full-time permanent positions. Um, we are going to be uh, hiring in eight different trades. Every trade that's going to be required to, uh, to do the complete fabrication of uh, affordable housing units. So it's been very exciting, very busy trying to recruit and get people into place. Um, since this is a brand new initiative, it's never been attempted before. It's a, it's a whole new way of looking at uh, trades training delivery. So with that being said, there is no, uh, there's no pamphlet, there's no manual on this. We are developing the, the curriculum from the theory component uh, through the practical component from the ground up. So it's a very, it's imperative that we get this team put together. That's where I come in. My responsibility is to get this team put into, get, uh, put into place and, and put together so that we can start working right away and get this curriculum uh, up and running and ready to be delivered for our first intake of students in January. Very good. Now, you mentioned affordable housing. Uh, what is the project that is taking place starting in January? Uh, Yes, okay. So the project is we are going to be uh, constructing 11 to 1200 square foot homes uh, for the communities and surrounding areas. Uh, it's going to help address the, uh, the affordable housing issue that uh, it, it seems to be uh, not, not common uh, to this area, but it's, it's, it's provincially. So uh, we are not competing with the industry at all. We're trying to fill a, a void out there that uh, the communities uh, are in dire need for these affordable housing units. But uh, the main reason uh, for us uh, going into this endeavor is for trades training. So we were gonna be training students in eight different trades. Um, carpentry, cabinetry, HVAC, which is heating and ventilation and air conditioning, uh, roofing, uh, flooring, and plumbing. So we're gonna be looking at uh, around 100 students per intake. It's going to be a 26 week program. We are going to construct uh, affordable housing units. Uh, these are single detached homes. 
They are going to be completed uh, at the end of the 26 weeks. They will be uh, sold and uh, this will help the, the Institute become self-sustained. So the students after 26 weeks will be leaving with some very tangible hands-on skills that they can take to any job site and be job ready in their chosen trade. Uh, it's, um, it, it's like I said before, it is a very, very unique way of looking at that training. Uh, and John had mentioned too that uh, it, it'll help the students to open up their eyes, give them a path if they want to pursue to get their certificate of qualification or their Red Seal Journeyman uh, or Journey Person papers and certifications. That door is, is wide open for them. And if they want to just uh, you know stay where they are, if they're happy doing what they're doing, uh, the choice is going to be totally up to them. And uh, this is going to help give back to the community as well. So we're going to have a lot of students coming from uh, the high school sector, uh, any walk of life. There, anybody is welcome to participate. And uh, uh, it could be just uh, people looking for a change, a change in their life, a change in their career. And we're going to give them the opportunity to, uh, to uh, explore new opportunities that are, that are right here at the fingertips. Well, and it, it really is that ripple effect from, you know, hiring uh, for the actual institute to uh, bringing in 100 students, seeing the impact. Uh, I do have a quote uh, from the Ontario uh, the provincial website, and it's a quote from Caroline Mulrooney, and it, it says, this project will provide good jobs for economic development and provide affordable housing in our region. All the things you just talked about and, you know, that ripple effect again of how it will help our community and spur economic development. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, I get to come in on the fun part. So all the legwork has been done by the Institute uh, or the, uh, the GTTI uh, staff. Uh, it's been years in the making and uh, I get to come along and now develop this team and develop this program and get it up and running and, and oversee the operations. So uh, I, I want to thank the GTTI team for uh, preparing this uh, and setting me up for success. It's, uh, it's just an incredible uh, opportunity uh, and a program. It's just, uh, it's just amazing. Well, and that's interesting, John, because you have been a part of this in so many different facets. You were the executive director one time. You are on the board. You're the board chair currently. Um, to see this dream and this vision um, come to fruition, how does that feel? Now you're in those final stages of <laughs> what happened. It might, you must be thrilled. Uh, beyond, uh, there, there, I think I would have trouble really trying to articulate it in words because um, the organization uh, has has thrived over time, and it has. It's not that we haven't been met with some challenges that people look at initially and say, "How are we going to get over this?" Because I want to go back to our history and just point out something that that should really be important to anybody who's watching the show. Um, I mentioned that uh, 14 years ago, when the organization incorporated, two of the founding partners were the public school board and the Catholic school board. For the first six years, um, they actually funded the salary for the executive director. Right. It was in 2011 that the school boards went to GTTI board and said, we hate to break the bad news to you, but we can no longer uh, sustain the salary for your ED position. Uh, I wasn't there. I can just tell you about what the reaction of the board was at the time. It was like, where in the heck are we going to find some money to be able to do this? Um, but like anything else, you you put your head, you know, put he good heads together and say, this is how we're going to do it. Um, it was actually, that was probably the, the kickstart to really starting some thinking to say, hey, we never thought that we were going to be able to do this. We did. We overcame that challenge. And so from there came this idea of, how can we take that challenge, look at it, and continue to make some more challenges, whether they're, whether they're self-made or whether they are a result of circumstance, how can we continue to overcome these, what seem to be barriers? They're really not. They really are opportunities that you can say, we can solve this issue. Um, so this whole idea about expanding programming has been, uh, there ever since I, I became the ED, it's let's explore ways that we can do this. And really when you look at some of the partnerships that we have developed over time, uh, really was a result of 
okay, let's see if we can get this program together and let's see if this funder will fund it. Sometimes the answer is no, we, it doesn't fit into their scheme. We just don't accept no for an answer. Let me give you an example. We, we, we knew several years ago that there was an incredible unfilled demand for AZDZ truck driver certification. We knew that there was a very bad rap in the community because of some of the places where people were going to get trained for not very much money and not great things ended up happening as a result of those people going through those programs. Uh, we were persistent. We kept, we went to the region, we went to other places and said, we're not making this up. If you read all of the data that's out there, you will see that there's going to be a dramatic increased shortage for professional drivers in the field. Put the pro we again put a program together. We found Trillium Corporation that said, I think you guys are absolutely right. We partnered with one of the best places, in my opinion, in all of the province to deliver the absolute best training program that we could offer. We have graduates that go through the program, people who come back to us and say, you were the last resort. If you weren't here, I would not have been able to do what I'm doing. You have turned my life around. I was on the verge of declaring bankruptcy. I was you know, on social assistance for a number of years. Guess what? Not only do I have a job, but look outside, I bought a new car. And so the encouragement that we get at GTTI is when somebody comes back and basically says to us, you have altered my life trajectory. It was on this course, I interacted with you, and guess what, you turned it around. There is nothing more motivating and more rewarding, Jennifer, than when that happens, even if you do it for one, client out of those 10,000, that would be rewarding. But it's more than one. We, we hear that on an annual basis, people who come back to us and say, wow. So when you take that, and again, our, our clientele, even in terms of some of the longer programs, like for example, the pre-apprenticeship programs, yeah. 20 students a year. Well, can you imagine how what's going to happen now that we have an opportunity to do it for well, every 26 weeks, 100 people. So over the course of the year, we've now gone from 20 to 200. So we're thinking if we've done this already, can you imagine the impact that we are going to have on the students? And also, it's not just about the students and the employer, because that's why we're here. But it's the spinoff, as, as Caroline Mulrooney suggested, it's, it's the economic benefits to the town as a whole. John, that we, we have students who have already started to call from as far away as Kingston. They're going to require housing. They're going to require all kinds of other things that are going to bolster the local economy. I love that. Perfect way to end this show. Thank you so much for everybody being here. On behalf of everyone at Rogers and the Chamber, thanks so much, and we'll see you next time on Mind Your Great. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Thank you.